In Islam, God is in a relationship with animals, according to the Quran, they praise him, even if this praise is not expressed in human language. Baiting animals for entertainment or gambling is prohibited. The Quran explicitly allows the eating of the meat of certain halal, Arabic, halal lawful animals. Although some Sufis have practiced vegetarianism, there has been no serious discourse on the possibility of vegetarian interpretations. Certain animals can be eaten under the condition that they are slaughtered in a specified way. Stunning cannot be used to kill an animal, according to the Halal Food Authority (HFA), a non-profit organization that monitors adherence to halal principles. But it can be used if the animal survives and is then killed by halal methods, the HFA adds. Reports the BBC. Prohibitions include swine, carrion, and animals involved in dabiha Arabic, dabi y hati ritual slaughter in the name of someone other than God. The Quran also states, Eat of that over which the name of Allah hath been mentioned. <laughs> animals in pre Islamic Arabia In pre-Islamic Arabia, Arab Bedouin, like other people, attributed the qualities and the faults of humans to animals. Generosity, for example, was attributed to the cock, perfidy to the lizard, stupidity to the bustard, and boldness to the lion, based on the facts that the names of certain tribes bear the names of animals, survivals of animal cults, prohibitions of certain foods and other indications. W. R. Smith argued for the practice of totemism by certain tribes of Arabia. Others have argued that this evidence may only imply practice of a form of animalism. In support of this, for example, it was believed that upon one's death, the soul departs from the body in the form of a bird usually a sort of owl, the soul as bird then flies about the tomb for some time, occasionally crying out for vengeance. <laughs> Human duties in utilizing animals According to Islam, human beings are allowed to use animals, but only if their rights are respected. The owner of an animal must do everything they can to benefit the animal. If the owner fails to perform their duties for the animal, nobody else has the right to use them. The duties humans have for animals in Islam are based on the Quran, Sunnah and traditions. <laughs> Protection of animal lives From the Islamic perspective, animal protection is more important than the fulfillment of certain religious obligations in special circumstances that whoever kills a soul unless for a soul or for corruption done in the land, it is as if he had slain mankind entirely. And whoever saves one, it is as if he had saved mankind entirely. Topic. Protection of animals' physical health Harming, disabling, injuring, or cutting out the organs from any animal is prohibited. Islam strongly warns people against committing such an act. Muslims may not cut the forelock, mane, or tail of a horse, because it is believed there is goodness in its forelock, its mane provides it warmth, and it swats insects away with its tail. Topic. Protection of animals' sexual health Muslims are not allowed to commit some acts like castration and interbreeding animals. Muhammad forbade people from castrating animals. Topic. Preventing cruelty and maltreatment to animals From the Muslim perspective, Muslims are not allowed to harass and misuse animals, which even includes actions like snatching a leaf from an ant's mouth. Muslims have no right to brand animals, even in the war they will not be hamstringing or crucifying animals before killing and burning them even though they cause harm to human. They should not be harassed to obtain animal meat by doing things like swift and powerful slaughter, avoid cutting lengthwise for fast die or must be refused anything that causes interval between slaughtering and final death. In Islamic slaughter, one is not authorized to break the spinal cord by cutting its head or breaking its backbone, and even removing wool from animals is not allowed because it causes them vulnerability. Topic. Avoiding punishment of animals In Islam, Muslims are not allowed to use any equipment that damages the animal, for example, beating them in a circus show, forcing them to carry heavy loads, or making them run at extreme speeds in races even to train them. Instead, it should use methods such as sensitization to specific sounds. 
Topic: <laughs> Providing foodstuffs. Muslims are obliged to provide food and water for any thirsty or hungry animal they see, even if the animal does not belong to them. In providing food and water it should be noted a few points, 1 the quality of the provisions, 2 the provision rate, in this case, it should be noted the animal's condition pregnancy, illness, working, etc. and the place of the animal. <laughs> providing sanitation Animal's health must be respected in itself, its food and water, its place of living. Topic. Providing medication In the event an animal falls ill, Muslims are expected to pay for the care and medication. Topic. Providing dwelling From an Islamic view, the appropriate place for animal life should have three characteristics. One, fits the animal situation, they should not be placed in a dirty and bad condition on the pretext that they do not understand. Two, fits the physical needs of the animal, the place should be in such a way so as to keep the animal healthy and protect it from cold and heat. Three, the dwelling of animals should not cause pollution of the environment or disease of other organisms. Topic. Respecting animal of status In Islam, the privacy of animals is respected as of humans. Respect to animals is not limited to their living time, but after death, it is also not right to disrespect their bodies for malicious purposes. Quran Although over 200 verses in the Quran deal with animals and six surah chapteral divisions of the Quran are named after animals, animal life is not a predominant theme in the Quran. Haywan, haywan Arabic, haywan plural haywanet, the Arabic word meaning animal, appears only once in the Quran but in the sense of everlasting life personal. On the other hand, the term daba Arabic, dabat plural dawab, usually translated as beast or creature. To sometimes differentiate from flying birds while surprisingly including humans, occurs a number of times in the Quran, while remaining rare in medieval Arabic works on zoology. Animals in the Quran and early Muslim thought may usually though not necessarily, be seen in terms of their relation to human beings, producing a tendency toward anthropocentrism. The Quran teaches that God created animals from water. God cares for all his creatures and provides for them. All creation praises God, even if this praise is not expressed in human language. God has prescribed laws for each species laws of nature. Since animals follow the laws God has ordained for them, they are to be regarded as Muslim, just as a human who obeys the laws prescribed for humans Islamic law is a Muslim. Just like humans, animals form communities. In verse 638, the Quran applies the term ummah, generally used to mean a human religious community for genera of animals. The Encyclopedia of the Quran states that this verse has been far reaching in its moral and ecological implications. There is not an animal that lives on the earth, nor a being that flies on its wings, but forms part of communities like you. Nothing have we omitted from the book, and they all shall be gathered to their Lord in the end. The Quran says that animals benefit humans in many ways and that they are aesthetically pleasing to look at. This is used a proof of God's benevolence towards humans. Animals that are slaughtered in accordance with Sharia may be consumed. According to many verses of the Quran, the consumption of pork is sinful, unless there is no alternative other than starving to death in times, for example, of war or famine. Surat Yusuf of the Quran mentions that a reason why Yaqob was reluctant to let his son Yusuf to play in the open, even in the presence of his brothers, was that a wolf could eat him. The Quran contains three mentions of dogs. Verse 5 to 4 says, Lawful for you are all good things, and the prey that trained hunting dogs and falcons catch for you. Verse 1818 18 describes the companions of the cave, a group of saintly young men presented in the QUR and as exemplars of religion, sleeping with their dog stretching out its forelegs at the threshold. Further on, in verse 22, the dog is always counted as one of their numbers, no matter how they are numbered. 
In Muslim folklore, affectionate legends have grown around the loyal and protective qualities of this dog, whose name in legend is Kitmir, hunting dogs and the dog of the companions of al kaf Arabic, al -khf the cave are described in a positive light, and the companionship of these dogs is mentioned with approval. The Quran, thus, contains not even a hint of the condemnation of dogs found in certain hadith. There is a whole chapter in the Quran naming the ants. In Sunni Islam killing of ants is prohibited. The Quran talks about a miraculous she-camel of God Arabic, she -camel that came from stone, in the context of the Prophet Salah, Thamudi people and Al-Hijr, pork is haram Arabic, haram forbidden to eat, because its essence is considered impure. This is based on the verse of the Quran where it is described as being raish Arabic, rai s impure Quran 6-145. Verses 50 and 51 of Surat al muddathir in the Quran talk about humor, whom you are asses or donkeys fleeing from a kaswara, ka's war at lion, beast of prey or hunter, in its criticism of people who were averse to Muhammad's teachings, such as donating wealth to the less wealthy. <laughs> Sunnah Sunnah refers to the traditional biographies of Muhammad wherein examples of sayings attributed to him and his conduct have been recorded. Sunni and Shia hadith anecdotes about Muhammad differ vastly, with Shia hadith generally containing more anthropomorphism and praise of animals. Animals must not be mutilated while they are alive. Muhammad is also reported by Ibn Omar and Abdallah bin Alice to have said. There is no man who kills even a sparrow or anything smaller, without its deserving it, but God will question him about it on the judgment day. And, whoever is kind to the creatures of God is kind to himself. Muhammad issued advice to kill animals that were fasik Arabic, fawasik, harmful ones, such as the rat and the scorpion, within the holy area haram Arabic, haram holy area of Mecca. Killing other non domesticated animals in this area, such as zebras and birds, is forbidden. There is an account in the Quran Surah and Naml of Sulaiman Solomon talking to ants and birds. Muslims are required to sharpen the blade when slaughtering animals to ensure that no pain is felt. Muhammad is said, For charity showed to each creature which has a wet liver, i.e., is alive, there is a reward. There is a hadith in Mawada Imam Malik about Muslim pilgrims having to beware of the wolf. Besides other animals, Ibn Mughafal reported, The Messenger of Allah may peace be upon him ordered the killing of rabid dogs, and then said, What about them? I. E. About other dogs, and then granted concession to keep the dog for hunting and the dog for the security of the herd, and said, When the dog licks the utensil, wash it seven times, and rub it with earth the eighth time. From Muslim Book number 002, Hadith number 0551, Ibn Umar reported, Allah's Messenger may peace be upon him giving the command for killing dogs. From Muslim Book number 010, Hadith number 3809, Some Muslim commentators e Basam Zawadi suggest however that these killings were to be limited to rabid dogs. Primary source the majority of Muslim jurists consider dogs to be ritually unclean, though jurists from the Sunni Maliki school disagree. However, outside their ritual uncleanness, Islamic fatwa, or rulings, enjoin that dogs be treated kindly or else be freed. Muslims generally cast dogs in a negative light because of their ritual impurity. The story of the seven sleepers of Ephesus in the Quran and also the role of the dog in early Christianity is one of the striking exceptions. Though dogs are not recommended as pets, they are allowed to be kept, especially if used for work and protection, such as guarding the house or farm, or when used for hunting purposes. Muhammad, the messenger of Allah God in Islam, is also reported as having reprimanded some men who were sitting idly on their camels in a marketplace, saying, either ride them or leave them alone. Apart from that, the camel has significance in Islam. Al-Qaswa Arabic, al -wa was a female Arabian camel that belonged to Muhammad, and was dear to him. Muhammad rode on Qaswa during the Hajira Arabic, Hij Rat migration from Mecca to Medina, his Hajj in 629 CE, and the conquest of Mecca in 630. The camel was also present during the Battle of Badr in 624. 
After the passing away of the Prophet, the camel is reported to have starved itself to death, refusing to take food from anyone. In the Nahj al Balagha, the Shia book of the sayings of Ali, an entire sermon is dedicated to praising peacocks. Bees are highly revered in Islam. The structural genius of a bee is thought as due to divine inspiration. Their product honey is also revered as medicine. Killing a bee is considered a great sin. In Shiite Ahadith, bats are praised as a miracle of nature. The Deeb Arabic, Deeb wolf may symbolize ferocity. As for the Kalb Arabic, Ka lb dog, there are different views regarding it. Some schools of Islamic law consider dogs as unclean najis, while others, such as the Maliki school of Islamic jurisprudence distinguishes between wild dogs and pet dogs, only considering the saliva of the former to be impure. According to the Quran, the use of hunting dogs is permitted, which is a reason the Maliki school draws a distinction between feral and domesticated dogs since Muslims can eat game that has been caught in a domesticated dog's mouth. The saliva of a domesticated dog cannot be impure. Abu l Fadl found it hard to believe that the same God who created such companionable creatures would have his prophet declare them unclean, stating that animosity towards dogs reflected views far more consistent with pre-Islamic Arab customs and attitudes. Furthermore, he found that a hadith from one of the most trustworthy sources tells how the prophet himself had prayed in the presence of his playfully cavorting dogs. Islamic scholar Ingrid Matson teaches that for followers of other schools, "...there are many other impurities present in our homes, mostly in the form of human waste, blood, and other bodily fluids," and that since it is common for these impurities to come in contact with a Muslim's clothes, they are simply washed or changed before prayer. The Quran 1818 praises a group of dogs that guarded Muslims who were fleeing religious persecution. Matson thus notes that this tender description of the dog guarding the cave makes it clear that the animal is good company for believers." The historian William Montgomery Watt states that Muhammad's kindness to animals was remarkable. He cites an instance of Muhammad while traveling with his army to Mecca in 630 CE, posting sentries to ensure that a female dog and her newborn puppies were not disturbed. On the other hand, in a tradition found in the Sunni hadith book al muwatta Muhammad is reported as saying that the company of dogs voids a portion of a Muslim's good deeds. However, in two separate narrations by Abu Huraira, the Prophet told his companions of the virtue of saving the life of a dog by giving it water and quenching its thirst. One story referred to a man who was blessed by Allah for giving water to a thirsty dog, the other was a prostitute who filled her shoe with water and gave it to a dog, who had its tongue rolling out from thirst. For this deed she was granted the ultimate reward, the eternal paradise under which rivers flow, to live therein forever. All of the Qutb al Siddha record hadiths prohibiting one from keeping dogs except for farming, herding, and hunting, with those not keeping them for such purposes punished with deduction of karat from their rewards each day. In a chapter on al Musakat, Muslim ibn al Hajjaj records 15 traditions on the spiritual loss incurred from domestication of dogs, with seven being on the authority of Abd Allah ibn Umar and the other eight on Abu Huraira's authority. While five reports of Ibn Umar state two carats as a daily deduction for keeping dogs without a genuine purpose, the other two refer to deduction of only one carat Only one report of Abu Huraira mentions the deduction as two carats, while the other seven mentions it as one. Three hadiths in Dabai and Sayyid of Sahih al-Bukhari are among some of the hadiths which include Ibn Umar's tradition regarding deduction of two carats for the same. According to a narration classified as authentic by Muslim Ibn al Hajjaj, jet black dogs with two spots on the eyes are a manifestation of evil in animal form. However, according to Khalid Abu l Fadl, the majority of scholars regard this to be pre Islamic Arab mythology and a tradition to be falsely attributed to the Prophet. In spite of El Fadl's views, the Hadith today continue to publish that dogs are unclean and they annul prayers. Domestic cats have a special place in Islamic culture. Muhammad is said to have loved his cat Mu'ezza Arabic, Mu'izat to the extent that he would do without his cloak rather than disturb one that was sleeping on it. Big cats like the Asad, Asa D. Lion, Namir, Nami R. Leopard, and Namur, Namar Tiger, can symbolize ferocity, similar to the wolf. Apart from ferocity, the lion has an important position in Islam and Arab culture. 
Men noted for their bravery, like Ali, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib and Omar Mukhtar, were given titles like Asad Allah, Asa d al, Lion of God, and Asad as Sara, Asa d al Sa h Ra, Lion of the Desert. A spider is supposed to have saved Muhammad and Abu Bakr by spinning a web over the entrance of the cave in which they hid. Because of the web, the persecutor of them through the cave must be empty, otherwise, there would not have been a web. Therefore, Muslims consider killing spiders as a sin, however, "...jurists from the Sunni Maliki school disagree with the idea that dogs are unclean." Individual fatawa Arabic. rulings have indicated that dogs be treated kindly or otherwise released and earlier Islamic literature often portrayed dogs as symbols of highly esteemed virtues such as self-sacrifice and loyalty, which, in the hands of despotic and unjust rulers, become oppressive instruments. <laughs> <laughs> Muslim cultures Usually, in Muslim-majority cultures, animals have names one animal may be given several names, which are often interchangeable with names of people. Muslim names or titles like Asad and Gadanfar Arabic for lion, Shir and Arslan Persian and Turkish for lion, respectively are common in the Muslim world. Prominent Muslims with animal names include, Hamza, Abd al-Rahman ibn Sakr al-Azdi called Abu Huraira. The father of the kitten, Abdul Qadir Galani, called Al Baz Al Ashhab, the wise falcon, and Lal Shabazz Kalander of Sewan, called Red Falcon. Islamic literature contains many stories of animals. Arabic and Persian literature boast a large number of animal fables. The most famous, Kalila wa Dimna or Panchatantra, translated into Arabic by Abd Allah ibn al Mukaffa in the 8th century, was also known in Europe. In the 12th century, Shihab al-Din al-Surawadi wrote many short stories of animals. At about the same time, in northeastern Iran, Atar Nashapuri Farid al-Din Atar composed the epic poem Mantik al-Tayr, meaning the conference of the birds. In Malaysia in 2016, the Malaysian Islamic Development Department, a religious governing body, prohibited the use of the term hot dog to refer to the food of that name. It asked food outlets selling them to rename their products or risk refusal of halal certification. Per local media, Malaysian halal food guidelines prohibit naming halal products after non-halal products. Islamist organization Hamas which controls the Gaza Strip, banned public dog walking in May 2017, stating it was to "...protect our women and children." Hamas officials stated that the ban was in response to rise in dog walking on the streets which they stated was against culture and traditions in Gaza. Controversy Ritual slaughter The ritual methods of slaughter practiced in Islam and Judaism have been decried by some UK animal welfare organizations as inhumane and causing severe suffering. According to Judy MacArthur Clark, chairperson of the Farm Animal Welfare Council, cattle require up to two minutes to bleed to death when halal or kosher means of slaughter are used. This is a major incision into the animal and to say that it doesn't suffer is quite ridiculous. In response, Majid Katmi of the Muslim Council of Britain stated that, I tease a sudden and quick hemorrhage. A quick loss of blood pressure and the brain is instantaneously starved of blood and there is no time to start feeling any pain." In permitting Dabia, the German Constitutional Court cited the 1978 study led by Professor Wilhelm Schultz at the University of Veterinary Medicine Hanover which concluded that, t he slaughter in the form of ritual cut is, if carried out properly, painless in sheep and calves according to the EEG recordings and the missing defensive actions. Muslims and Jews have also argued that traditional British methods of slaughter have meant that "...animals are sometimes rendered physically immobile, although with full consciousness and sensation. The application of a sharp knife in Shechita and Dab, by contrast, ensures that no pain is felt, the wound inflicted is clean, and the loss of blood causes the animal to lose consciousness within seconds." See also. Animal rights Animal sacrifice Animals in Christian art Legal aspects of ritual slaughter 
Relate animals in the Quran Qurbani Sulayman and animals Surat and Naml Yunus and the Nun Topic. References Topic. Notes Masri, Al-Hafiz Bashir Ahmad 1993. Animal Welfare in Islam. ISBN 0-86037-411-4. Lfadl, Khalid Abu 2004. Encyclopedia of Religion and Nature, S. V. Dogs in the Islamic Tradition and Nature. New York. New York, Continuum International. Foltz, Richard C. 2006. Animals in Islamic Tradition and Muslim Cultures. One World Publications. ISBN 1-85168-398-4. Gill, H. A. R. Shorter Encliopedia of Islam. Netherlands, Brill Publishers. Khan, Tausif, Honey Bee, in Muhammad in History, Thought, and Culture, an Encyclopedia of the Prophet of God, two vols, edited by C. Fitzpatrick and A. Walker, Santa Barbara, ABC Clio, 2014, Vol. I, pp. 263-265. ISBN 1610691776. Hill, Ahmed 1993. Thought, and Culture, An Encyclopedia of the Prophet of God, two vols, edited by C. Fitzpatrick and A. Walker, Santa Barbara, ABC Clio, 2014, Vol. I, pp. 24 29. ISBN 1610691776. Hill, Ahmed 1993. Islamic Concern, a site dedicated to improving Islam's understanding of animals. Muslim Group supports students' right to service dog. The Great Arab Muslim American Dog Story. Video regarding compassion for animals by the late Imam B.A. Hafiz al-Masri, Shah Jahan Mosque, Woking, United Kingdom. Husni al-Khatib Shahada, translated by Dan Schlossberg, Islamic Rulings Prove, Allah Loves Animals, Animals and Islam by A. R. Spiritual Vegan, Vegan Views 91 Winter 2001-02 Animals in Islam by Al-Hafiz B. A. Masri Dogs in Islam